In a world devastated by a fungal pandemic, the infected of The Last of Us represent one of the most fascinating and terrifying interpretations of zombies in pop culture. But these aren't mere undead, they're the result of meticulously conceived biological evolution, where humans become hosts for a parasite that gradually transforms them into something unrecognizable. The Science Behind the Infection The Cordyceps Brain Infection CBI, is based on the fungus Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, a real parasite that infects ants. In The Last of Us universe, a mutation allowed this fungus to overcome the species barrier, infecting humans when global temperatures exceeded the critical threshold of 94 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately 34.4 degrees Celsius. Unlike other apocalyptic pathogens, Cordyceps doesn't immediately kill its host, it controls it. The fungus invades the human brain, growing mycelium within brain tissue and killing its cells. The host's memories are erased, their motor functions redirected toward a single purpose, finding uninfected organisms and spreading the infection. Transmission occurs in two main ways. Direct bites from infected to humans. Airborne spores released by infected corpses. In areas densely filled with spores, infection can occur in minutes, making breathing difficult and movements lethargic. Only Ellie has demonstrated the ability to breathe spores without difficulty due to her immunity. The life cycle of the infected. The infection journey follows specific stages, each more lethal than the previous. Let's examine this grotesque metamorphosis. Stage 1. Runner. The beginning of transformation. The initial stage of infection occurs within 1-2 days after exposure. Infected at this stage retain much of their human form, except for skin lesions and discoloration, bloodshot eyes, hair loss, erratic and rapid movements. What makes runners truly disturbing is the perception that human consciousness may still be partially present. Their moans often sound like crying, suggesting that at some level, they comprehend the horror of their condition. Some hesitate before attacking, as if part of them still fought against the fungus's control. Despite being the weakest stage, runners are extremely dangerous in groups. Their speed and tendency to attack in hordes make them lethal to unprepared survivors. They respond to visual and auditory stimuli, and while they can be eliminated relatively easily, a single shot or well-placed blows, underestimating them is fatal. As for longevity, runners remain at this stage between two weeks and a year, depending on environmental conditions. In drier areas like Lincoln, large runner populations persist without advancing to the next stage, suggesting certain environmental conditions are necessary for infection progression. Stage 2. Stalker. Between Worlds. After about two weeks to a year of infection, Cordyceps advances to the stalker stage. Here, drastic changes occur. The fungus begins to rupture the skull. Fungal growths emerge from the eyes and shoulders. Parts of the skin detach. In some cases, the nose falls off completely. Stalkers represent an evolutionary bridge between runners and clickers. They maintain part of their vision but begin to develop rudimentary echolocation. What makes them exceptionally lethal is their tactical intelligence. They hide, plan, and ambush their prey. As seen in the series' second season, these infected do what we do. They use cover, plan attacks, and lure victims into traps. Some stalkers enter a state of extreme torpor, merging with walls and remaining dormant until prey passes nearby. The fungus grows rapidly from these immobile hosts, eventually calcifying and killing them. Stalkers demonstrate surprising coordination, often attacking in pairs and using the environment to their advantage. This tactical capability suggests the fungus not only controls the body but has also adapted certain cognitive functions to maximize its chances of propagation. Stage 3. Clicker. The Grotesque Symphony. After approximately one year of infection, the host transforms into a clicker possibly the most iconic stage of The Last of Us. At this point, the fungus has completely dominated the human body. The skull is completely ruptured by fungal growth. The eyes are destroyed or covered by fungus. Fungal plates form a natural armor. The mouth becomes an opening filled with rotten, irregular teeth. Clickers are completely blind, relying entirely on echolocation. The characteristic clicking sound they emit is used to navigate the environment and locate prey. This sensory system is surprisingly effective. They can detect subtle movements and sounds that normal humans wouldn't notice. The strength of clickers is significantly greater than that of uninfected humans. Their bite is instantly fatal, tearing throats and tissues with brutal ease. The fungal armor offers considerable protection, making headshots less effective than against earlier stages. A disturbing characteristic of clickers is their erratic behavior. They can often be seen scratching at the fungal growth covering their faces, suggesting some vestigial element of the host continues trying to resist the infection, 
even in advanced stages. Flickers can survive for decades at this stage, as evidenced by their presence in areas abandoned for more than 20 years. They possess a certain resistance to the elements, including extreme cold, thanks to the fungal growth that acts as natural insulation. Stage 4. Evolutionary Bifurcation, Bloaters and Shamblers After several years of infection, cordyceps can evolve into two distinct stages depending on the environment. Bloaters in drier regions and shamblers in humid areas. Bloaters. Fungal Fortresses Bloaters are true tanks among the infected. The fungus is calcified into thick, armor-like plates. The body swells excessively to support the weight of fungal growth. Clusters of sacs filled with mycotoxins grow throughout the body. Superhuman strength capable of tearing limbs and crushing skulls. What makes bloaters truly terrifying is their ability to tear toxin sacs from their own bodies and throw them as biological bombs. Upon impact, these sacs release toxic clouds of spores that cause burns and suffocation. The fungal armor makes bloaters extremely resistant to firearm damage. However, this protection comes at a cost they are significantly slower than other stages, with predictable movements. Their vulnerability to fire is pronounced, with flames capable of cracking their outer armor. Bloaters represent the fungus's total dedication to brute force and defense. They are the true bosses among regular infected, capable of withstanding an impressive amount of damage and generally requiring specialized ammunition or fire to be defeated. Shamblers. Toxic mutation. In contrast, shamblers are the result of infection in coastal or very humid environments. Body covered with pustules filled with acid, ability to release clouds of corrosive spores when threatened. After death, they explode in a final release of airborne cordyceps. Shamblers possess significant resistance, though less than bloaters. Their primary weapon is chemical attack when sufficiently provoked. They release clouds of acidic spores that cause severe skin burns. This creates an effective denial zone around them. Shambler behavior is particularly interesting because it demonstrates how the environment directly influences cordyceps evolution. Neil Druckmann confirmed this variant emerged specifically due to prolonged exposure to water, showing the fungus's adaptability to different ecosystems. Final stage, Rat King, the Supreme Abomination. Under exceptional circumstances, cordyceps can create something truly unique. In Seattle's hospital, after more than 20 years of infection under specific conditions, humidity, proximity, and unbridled fungal growth, the Rat King emerges. This superorganism represents the maximum expression of cordyceps potential. Fusion of multiple infected, including clickers, stalkers, and at least one bloater. Pulsating mass unified by fungal growth. Colossal strength capable of breaking through concrete walls. Extraordinary resistance to fire, bombs, and weapons. Fragmentation capability, with separated parts still active. The Rat King defies our understanding of infection limits. It suggests that, given ideal conditions, Cordyceps can continue evolving indefinitely, always finding new ways to optimize its hosts for survival and propagation. This stage doesn't represent a planned evolutionary path, but rather the unintended consequence of extreme circumstances, raising disturbing questions about what might emerge in other isolated environments around the world. The immortality of the infected. A fascinating question about the infected is, are they immortal? The answer is complex. Technically, the infected aren't immortal they can be killed by sufficient physical trauma. However, cordyceps seems to significantly slow the natural process of aging and deterioration. Infected in advanced stages have been documented surviving for decades without apparent food. The fungus seems to preserve the host's body in a state of suspended animation, maintaining minimal vital functions while redirecting energy for growth and propagation. This explains why infected can remain dormant for extended periods the fungus enters hibernation when no prey is available. Theories suggest cordyceps may extract nutrients from the environment moisture, decomposing organic matter, to sustain its hosts during periods of scarcity. This would explain why infected are frequently found in damp or moldy areas. Interestingly, cordyceps continues to grow even after the host's death. The body becomes a fungal mass that eventually releases spores transforming into a moss that can fill entire structures with deadly fungal growths. Both spores and the dead fruiting body die quickly when exposed to sunlight, limiting the danger they pose in open environments. Strength and capabilities. The strength of the infected increases dramatically as the infection progresses. Runners. Strength comparable to normal humans, perhaps slightly increased due to lack of inhibitions. Stalkers. Increased strength, capable of knocking down adults with a single attack. Clickers. Significantly greater strength than humans, capable of easily tearing throats. Bloaters, shamblers, 
superhuman strength, can tear limbs and crush skulls. Rat King, colossal strength capable of destroying structures and vehicles. Beyond brute force, infected develop remarkable sensory adaptations. The loss of vision in advanced stages is compensated by sophisticated echolocation and extremely acute hearing. They can detect minimal vibrations and sounds imperceptible to humans. Pain resistance also increases with infection progression. While runners still demonstrate sensitivity to pain, moaning and agony due to fungal deformations, advanced stages like clickers and bloaters can absorb significant damage before being incapacitated. Residual consciousness. One of the most disturbing aspects of the infected is the question of residual consciousness. To what extent does the original human remain within these monsters? Evidence suggests some level of consciousness persists, at least in the early stages. Runners often cry or hesitate before attacking. Infected, who still have intact faces, often appear remorseful or distressed during attacks. Clickers can be seen scratching at the fungal growth on their faces, as if trying to remove the parasite, Ellie's famous line to Sam. They might still look like people, but that person isn't in there anymore, may not be entirely accurate. Perhaps fragments of the original consciousness remain trapped, helplessly watching as their bodies are used as puppets by cordyceps. This existential horror is part of what makes The Last of Us so deeply disturbing. It's not just the fear of death, but the fear of becoming a monster while some part of you is still aware of what's happening. Environmental Adaptation Cordyceps demonstrates remarkable capacity to adapt to different environments. In dry areas, evolves into bloaters with thick fungal armor. In humid, coastal regions, develops shamblers with acid attacks. In prolonged confinement, can form abominations like the Rat King. This adaptability suggests impressive evolutionary intelligence. The fungus responds to local conditions, optimizing its hosts to maximize chances of survival and transmission in each specific ecosystem. Additionally, the fungus seems to offer protection against elements like extreme cold. Infected can survive temperatures that would be fatal to humans, thanks to fungal growth acting as natural insulation. Unanswered questions. Are there other infection stages yet undiscovered? Could infected eventually develop some kind of collective intelligence? Is there a limit to how long cordyceps can keep a host alive? Why are some people, like Ellie, immune? Could the fungus eventually evolve into forms transmissible through air without needing spores? Perhaps most disturbing, could cordyceps one day adapt to preserve more human consciousness, creating hybrids that maintain cognitive capabilities while remaining under fungal control? Conclusion. The infected of The Last of Us represent a unique vision of the apocalypse scene not based on blind rage or bloodlust, but on nature's relentless evolutionary logic. Cordyceps isn't malevolent, it simply exists to propagate, using humans as vehicles for that purpose. The true horror isn't in the monsters humans become, but in the process's inevitability. The infection doesn't discriminate no matter who you were, what life you had, what dreams you nurtured. Once infected, you become part of something larger and much older than humanity. As Dr. Newman ominously observed in the series, it's not millions at risk, but billions billions of puppets with poisoned minds, permanently fixed on a unified goal, to spread the infection to every last living human by any means necessary. In this world, the infected aren't just enemies to be feared and fought, they're a constant reminder of human civilization's fragility and nature's indifference to our suffering. They are, at their core, the distorted reflection of humanity, transformed by the planet's most ancient evolutionary force. And perhaps that's the most disturbing aspect of all. In the end, The Last of Us doesn't show us the end of the world, but simply nature taking its course.